So continuing on the feature of web security and cookies and session management, uh, we're going to kind of round it off with some defenses against attacks on session management. So really, the important thing is to get session management right. Um, and in order for all any of this to work, you need to not have attackers running code inside your website. So, you know, anything like cross-site scripting, all this falls apart. So first of all, you know, we'll cover that separately, but you need to defend against those kinds of attacks. But in order to get your session management secure so that you can't have that directly attacked, um, you need to just have a good session management solution. Um, thankfully, a lot of platforms have some good session management um, solutions built into them. So if you're using um, like J2EE, ASP.NET, PHP, Ruby on Rails, um, then you can use their session uh, management features um, and libraries and things to, to build upon. Uh, and generally speaking, if you have really good um, quality library that lots of people have contributed towards, a lot of people have audited and is being used by lots of different websites, then that's probably a better solution than you know what you're going to come up with yourself. And um, otherwise, you need to think really carefully about all the stuff that I'm about to talk about. Um, but if you're auditing someone else's website, again, you think about have they invented their own session management um, mechanism and have they made any of these kinds of mistakes? So first of all, it should be set so that session ID cookies are only sent over HTTPS. So they should be secure cookies. Um, you shouldn't mix on a website HTTP and HTTPS content. Um, and you shouldn't redirect HTTP to HTTPS directly because requests can send cookies. Um, so ideally, you, you're just using HTTPS. Servers should attempt to um, detect brute force attempt, attempts against session IDs and or usernames and passwords. And when someone is attempting a brute force attack, you should you know, have some alerting or logging of that information um, and block the IP address um, or introduce delays. So if you block IP addresses, just simply block them. You can um, end up introducing denial of service attacks. So kind of a safer option is to build in a delay. So once someone is making a certain number of requests, slow down the requests. And you might even incrementally slow them down more and more. And that can make brute force um, it, not a practical attack, attack anymore. So you can, um, you can stop brute force attacks by slowing them down if you see that they're happening. Um, other thing you can do is the server can try and track or bind a session ID to an IP address or like a location in some way. And so then when that changes, you can force them to re-authenticate. That does mean that if a user switches from mobile to um, Wi-Fi, for example, they'll have to re-authenticate. Um, so, you know, there's a bit of a usability and security trade-off there. Um, but, you know, that, that can introduce a good amount of security, added security, to stop um, some kinds of session hijacking attempts, because if someone manages to get your session cookie, but they're running on a different IP address as they would be, then you know that would stop that attack potentially. Um, you know, then they'll have to do other kinds of attacks. Like um, if they have cross-site scripting, they need to the, get the request to start from your your web browser, which unfortunately is also possible. But you know, one part of the solution is um, can be to stop those kinds of attacks um, against the like session hijacking directly. Servers can alert users about concurrent sessions. So for example, if the user is logged in to uh, the same website, but from another computer, uh, another IP address, then you might just put that up in the corner. It's like, did you know that you're also logged in there? Uh, because that can help, because if the user does know that, then it's not surprising. If it's a surprise to them. You could have them like have a little button to click to log them out, and then that basically would end both sessions straight away. If, you know, um, so that can help to defend against it. 
Um, servers can um, also provide just a way for um, users to log out and just to log people out after a certain amount of time. So sessions should time out um, on an idle time. So if someone's not actively doing anything, then just log them out because, you know, even a worst case scenario, they might have just walked away from their computer and someone else walks up and they start using their computer. Um, so if they're not actively doing anything, you should just log, log them out. If it's, you know, it depends on the security of the website, obviously. If you're on internet banking, that's why basically is after like a minute of inactivity, they just try and log you out of the, of the website compared to something like Facebook. They want you to stay logged in. They want you to use it all the time. So they won't necessarily um, do it. So it's, again, it's a usability security trade-off. The best thing to do is if they're not being active, log them out from a security perspective. Um, you might have an absolute timeout time as well. So even if they are being active, after a day or so of them using a computer, force them to authenticate again by logging them out. So it limits the chances to guess and use a stolen session ID. Um, you can also renew or regenerate session IDs. So the session IDs are changing, um, which can help. Um, and also it can help you should give the user an option to log out. So if they know they've finished the website, they can log themselves out and anyone else who might have stolen their session will also that session will be ended because the server will consider that session to be finished. Another layer of security that you can use are web application firewalls. So web application firewalls can detect and mitigate some session management threats. So Basically, a, a, a web application firewall is like a proxy that sits between the web server and the client and watches the requests. And if the requests look malicious, they won't even send the, those requests through to the server. They'll just say to the client, no, no, you can't send that. Or I might sanitize or, um, the request before sending them through. Um, so yeah, it can detect and modify malicious attempts before they're, they're sent to the server in the first place, which is a defensive um, thing to add. So in conclusion, we've um, you know we've talked about cookies, what they are. We talk about sessions um, and how they're established by session IDs or, or tokens that are typically stored in cookies. And we've talked about the different attacks that happen against them and some of the defenses that we should use. Um, but obviously, you know, one of the main ones is that session cookies should just be completely random. Uh, nice, strong, random things that the server sets. And ideally sets it when you log in um, so that the attacker can't do things like session fixation attacks. So I hope that's been interesting and uh, now you've got a, a better understanding about how um, sessions work on, on websites and the security around that.